Happy socialization in lockdown. How can we do it? You've got yourself a new puppy and you want to be sure you're doing everything right. And one of the things people tell you all the time is to pay close attention to the mysterious puppy socialization. And I know from my inbox that some of you are concerned how all this social distancing and lockdown will affect your socialization program with your puppy or your new rescue dog. I'm going to take a look at this with you and give you some reassurances that your dog won't be ruined for the rest of his life. Right now, it seems we've stepped into a movie of the kind I never like to watch. We've no idea what's going to happen next and we aren't even sure there'll be a happily ever after like in the movies. But you know what? We never know what's going to happen next. We never know what will happen tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. No idea. That's how we are all the time. It's just that collectively, everyone has this push to the front of their mind right now. There's lots of potential to get stressed, overwhelmed, panicky, but that's not going to help you be your best self, your healthiest self, and it sure won't help your family and your dog. So how about focusing on now and what you can do instead of a future which you can't possibly predict and what you can't do. You can take a leaf out of your dog's book for this. He's blissfully unaware of anything different except that everybody's now home. See how he lives in the moment. He's confident that food will arrive at the proper time, that fun and games will happen even if you can't take him on your normal walks. He's content to take life as it comes and enjoy the moment. Let us do that too and spend some time thinking about all the plus sides of this lockdown and whatever social restrictions you're experiencing. Now, I know this affects people differently. There's essential workers are still working and regulations are different in different countries, depending on the strength and the focus of our administrations. But for most people, they're beginning to enjoy daily living with their loved ones, perhaps for the first time in decades. They're spared the nightmare commute to their jobs, which many of them hate when they get there. They can take a hand in bringing their own children up without a carer or teacher taking their place. Employers are finding that relinquishing control and working with their staff from home actually works. Some people are learning to cook, some are learning to garden, to enjoy a new form of exercise, to read more, to learn a new skill. Many are taking this opportunity to sign up to a course on something they've wanted to do for ages, but never had the time. And self-employed workers are using their resilience and their drive to adapt their services and offerings to a new world. And of course, it seems the environment is loving it. I see the seeds here for huge social change if we can only grab this opportunity. But how will this isolation affect your young puppy? In general, you need to remember the purpose of socialization. It's actually a shorthand for socialization, familiarization and habituation. That means getting used to absolutely everything they're going to come across in our world, from carpets to cuckoo clocks, from collars to cars, sounds, voices, our body language, their body language, and not being bothered by it. So seeing and meeting other dogs and people are only a part of this. It's the whole experience of the puppy's life which feeds into this, all resulting in a rounded character with loads of good experiences. Look at the way some unfortunate children grow up. Think of abandoned street children living from hand to mouth, uncared for, facing plenty of cruelty. They grow up with all manner of problems to work on to try and put their lives right. These kids meet loads of other people. But unless the experience of meeting each person is a good one, it's not contributing to a calm and confident child. The same is true with dogs. The interactions with humans and dogs, horses, sheep, slippery floors and those cuckoo clocks need to be good experiences. There is one well-known trainer who advocates past the puppy, that the puppy should be passed around a large group of strangers and that this would be good for socialization. I would never ever want to inflict that ordeal on a puppy or a child. A long time ago I had a collie pup called Tip. She was a naturally retiring dog though a great worker. 
I'll always remember the look on her face when a visitor grabbed this eight-week-old puppy and held her close. Tippy's eyes were silently pleading help to me. I now know never to let this kind of thing happen. It certainly was a damaging experience for this sensitive young pup. So be aware that it is the quality of interactions rather than the quantity which will form a confident outgoing character in your dog without triggering any fears. It's about teaching your pup to accept novelty with curiosity, not fear. If your family's home with you, they can help by acting differently, walking differently, speaking differently. If you're alone, you can dress up to become new people. You can walk with a stick. You can bang on the door. You may have safe friends with or without dogs you can meet up with, all the while maintaining safe distance. Remember that while dogs can't contract this virus, they could transfer it on their coat from your hands to someone else. So social distancing for your dog too. Or latex gloves, perhaps. It won't surprise those of you who know me to hear me say that it's all about choice. Your puppy has to choose to approach a person or dog, not be forced, grabbed, handled without their permission. You need to do a lot of work providing this rounded experience. Puppy handling, different sounds, different surfaces, different locations, different weather. These, along with puppy gym and tricks, will all help your pup feel comfortable in her own skin. This is what socialization is really about, making a confident, capable, curious dog. This is all here for you in our Brilliant Family Dog Academy, which is carefully illustrated with dozens of videos. And walking in different places, even if you're limited right now, is important. As ever, you can carry your pup till he's able to put his feet on the road. One thing that will need careful attention while you're at home is teaching him how to cope with your absence without distress. This is hugely important for any puppy, especially now if you're isolated. So short absences, even to the next room, must be built in from the start and gradually extended. And what about my older dog? If you're unable to leave your home with your older dog, then now is the time to devise new and exciting games to entertain her. Think of scent games, hide and seek with the children or with you. Find the named object out of three. You can bury toys and treats in a box full of smaller boxes, plastic bottles and other safe objects for your dog to rummage through. Leave all those delivery cardboard boxes outside the house for three days to decontaminate. Then you can bring them in to hide things in for scent games. And this will be part of your puppy gym for your young puppy. Some of you who already have a great repertoire of rainy day fun games, do add them in the comments below and share your expertise and ingenuity. Refresh your retrieve and see just what a difference it makes in your daily life. When your dog can fetch your shoes, stack the dinner bowls, put her toys away. You've got no retrieve? Get Fetch It, my step-by-step -step book, and learn fast. You can find it at Amazon. It's such fun and it'll make a massive difference turning your bored dog into a valuable assistance dog. Now, if you're worried about your older dog getting her usual exercise and getting fat, think of new ways to get her and you moving. There's no need to worry with your puppy. Just bouncing about in the house is plenty of exercise for a pup. But for your older dog, you'll have to be inventive and maybe cut her food back a little to ensure she doesn't become tubby. If you have a garden, you can play fetch, chase and run about till her sides are heaving and her eyes gleaming. You can make a mini agility course with bamboo canes and clothes pegs to rest the crossbar on. Just ensure the jumps will collapse safely if your dog hits them. Start very small, just a step over, and slowly raise the jumps a little. If you can't get out at all apart from toilet breaks, what can you do inside? If you've got a treadmill, you can adapt this for your dog. If money is not a problem, buy a special dog one. How about carefully going up and down stairs? No jumping steps allowed. How about fast hide and seek games using the whole house? Can you use a corridor for recalls and retrieves? How about a step for your dog to step up and over and up and over? Balancing on books or cushions, twisting, turning, going through an old hula hoop, tricks, 
dance moves. YouTube is full of ideas. Check out the Dancing with Dogs videos from Crufts. If you haven't seen them, you will be amazed. You're sure to find something you can do with your dog and you can be sure too that the training is hard, physical and mental work for him. Just what you need if you're restricted. If you have the whole family at home, this is a time to involve them in your dog's training. And if you're alone at home, thank your lucky stars you have such a wonderful companion. No feelings of isolation for you. Our dogs can most certainly help us in these tricky times. Know that when we come out the other end, as we surely will, you'll have used your time so wisely that you'll have a new and wonderful relationship with your dog. And don't worry about him not seeing other dogs. As long as all his experiences are happy ones, where he gets to choose the level of interaction and he's experienced lots of different things, he'll feel confident and ready to explore and accept novelty. See you in brilliantfamilydog.com for more to help you with your lovely family dog.